Thank you all for coming to the first edition of the Gnosis Ethereum Meetup in 2024. For me, it's the first time attending since a long time, actually, because unfortunately I missed, missed a few editions. Uh, but I heard very good things about all of them. Um, I think right now uh, we are in a kind of interesting situation in crypto because it kind of feels like we are out of a bear market, but then also not really. Uh, like, of course, if you look at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, the prices have been developing quite nicely, but this has been mostly driven by the assumption that uh, new investors can deploy money, not because anything has really fundamentally changed. And I think this also is reflected if you look at all the other like assets that are on chain, basically their prices have hardly changed uh, over the last year. And uh, that kind of also gives a little bit of doubt that we are actually we are out of a bear market and actually uh, on a clear upwards trend right now. But I guess uh, now it's uh, another year for us to prove that we are building something that can fundamentally uh, change things. And uh, today I'm very excited to have two teams presenting uh, that can that are actually quite fundamental as well to uh, establish a new economy. Uh, the first presentation is about, sorry. The first presentation is about uh, how to build better cross-chain applications. So obviously we are now uh, living in a blockchain world where we have literally hundreds of different blockchains operational. I recently I talked to the team of um, Block Scout. Block Scout is uh, is a yeah, it's a blockchain explorer, and uh, they offer a solution that is very easily deployable by everyone. So it's kind of the default choice to uh, yeah to explore any kind of uh, yeah blockchain because you can easily deploy it, unlike Etherscan, which is quite involved. And they told me that they have over 700 instances of Block Scout being used in production. So at least there's like 700 blockchains running somewhere which are using Block Scout to some extent. And it just shows like how, how diverse already the obviously blockchain ecosystem is and it becomes obviously very important to see how we can uh, make interaction between those as seamless as possible. It's also very important to us at Gnosis. Obviously we also have our own blockchain and for us it's very important to see how can users move from one network to another and how can they transfer assets and how can they uh, relay information from one to another. We work actually on different verticals that are relevant for that, not only for asset management, but also how to, for example, manage uh, wallets across networks, especially around the safe. And yeah, it's, it's a very important topic, especially with the emergence of so many different blockchains. And I'm uh, very happy that uh, Alice is here today from Fox Finance and she will explain us how they are elevating user experience in DeFi across networks. Let's welcome Alice. Thanks everybody for coming here today. Uh, excited to talk about cross-chain DeFi and how folks finance is setting the new standard for uh, user experience in DeFi. My name is Alice, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Folks Finance, which is a DeFi platform to lend, borrow, trade, and manage digital assets all in one place. I'm the Web3 Marketing Advisor and uh, I'm the co-founder of the Web3 Marketing Dinners in Lisbon. And let's get started. In the very beginning, I want you to take a look at today's uh, DeFi landscape where we have tons of layer ones, layer twos, breaches, DEXs, lending protocols. It can seem that the DeFi is ramping up with all of these new projects uh, popping up as mushrooms after the rain, but in fact, DeFi stagnated and became inefficient. To make a good trade or a profit in DeFi, one has to jump through a number of hoops, switching networks, looking for a lending protocol with higher and stable yield for a DEX to make a trade, and for a blockchain with faster and cheaper transactions. And here you may see my daily trading route where I do all back. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I can tell you guys that this is time consuming, expensive, and risky, and many people can relate to that. The next one. Um, so, 
Why do we need all of this hassle in DeFi if we can simply go to a centralized exchange and get everything in one shot? Well, most people actually do. If we look at the numbers, we will see that in DeFi, there is about five, six million users, whereas on Binance only, we have 160 million users. Uh, indeed, centralized exchanges have a lot of advantages. They have everything in one place. Uh, they have fiat on ramp of ramp, no bridging, no gas fees, no friction, nothing like that. No pain in the ass. But on the other side, it's not transparent, it's not reliable, and it's easily manipulated. You can obfuscate so many things on a centralized platform. And we can all recall the situation with FTX and Alameda Research last year, where people basically didn't know what they were lending against. Whereas in DeFi, everyone with a certain skill set can go and diligence the code and understand the project's balance sheet and see if it's solvent or not. But there is one thing in DeFi that can be improved, and this is uh, the capital efficiency. And this is where cross-chain and interoperability comes into place. And this is why we decided to go for the cross-chain expansion with Fox Finance. Next one. So, a little bit of history. Fox Finance is a decentralized platform where users can lend, borrow, trade, and manage digital assets all in one place. It was launched in Algorand Mainnet two years ago uh, with the best cap table of investors, Parafy, Jump Crypto, OKEx Ventures, Coinbase Ventures, Algorand Foundation, and many others. We quickly became the leading dApp on Algorand, accumulating almost the 80% of its TVL, and we quickly reached the limit. We've been always improving our protocol, building a seamless UX and UI, and smart contracts uh, on top of the lending smart contracts. And it quickly became a one-stop shop for digital asset management and trading in DeFi. But since lending was our core product offering, we realized the necessity of going cross-chain because even if you use the over-collateralized lending model, which is the best merit of DeFi lending, you are still borrowing against a single chain money markets. You've got lots of limits and if you still have to breach your funds, you still have to exit your existing positions and all of these interest bearing tokens are just becoming useless if you want to play, go and play around in other blockchains. And this is why we decided to expand cross chain. We partnered with the best cross-chain players, with Wormhole and Chainlink, and we enabled a unique hub-and-spoke model. So the new protocol will abstract away the chains and network from the user journey, allowing users to seamlessly interact with their favorite wallet on any chain uh, without any concerns about the gas fees, bridging, and network selection. Um, Basically, all of the functionality that we have right now, which is uh, swaps, lending, liquid staking, it all going to be shifted on the cross-chain protocol. The next one. And it's going to work on the hub and spoke model, um, where basically the hub chain is going to be avalanche with the, the EVM chains in the first deployments. It's going to be Ethereum, Optimism, and Arbitrum as the spokes chains. Um, the hub chain is going to store all of the state of the protocol and there will be zero state stored in the spokes chains to avoid asynchronicity and uh, to avoid race conditions between chains. The spokes chains are going um, gonna to be entry points for users to interact with protocol and users' operations are going to be passed through the spokes chains via the general messaging protocol, uh, which is in our case is going to be Chainlink CCIP and Wormhole. Um, and Avalanche as a hub chain um, is the, guarantees the best user experience thanks to its fast finality, low cost and transacting, uh, low cost of transacting and wide integrations with the used technologies such as Wormhole, CCTP and CCIP, which is really important for us. Next one. Um, overall, to wrap up, um, by allowing users to seamlessly interact with their favorite blockchain, with their favorite wallet, abstracting away the network selection, the gas fees, and bridging, 
we are upgrading the level of DeFi, the level of user experience. Um, we facilitate the crypto mass adoption, funneling more users into decentralized finance and improve the overall efficiency in DeFi. So, and this picture is gonna be the next slide, <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, the next one. Uh, a little bit about our strategic round that we are going through right now. Um, we're doing the strategic round to raise the funds for the cross-chain expansion, the border borderless leading uh, the round, and the investment round is almost oversubscribed, but we are always open to the right investors to jump in. And for our roadmap, uh, the testnet is going out next month. We are waiting for the mainnet in March. We are also planning to do the token launch uh, this year. And we are also building the mobile app and a debit card. I encourage everyone to join Fox Finance community, follow our social media, uh, subscribe to our channels to stay up to date because a lot of events are coming out in the next weeks and months. Don't hesitate to reach me out on X and on LinkedIn. Right. So why did you decide for Avalanche as the uh, hub chain? Um, so the first reasons is that it has um, enough liquidity on the chain, about one billion. Uh, it's fast, it's secure, and the transactions are quite uh, cheap. But for us, let's say the liquidity of the chain matters the most because our core like our core our core smart contracts are the lending smart contracts and we have liquidations happening. So and when liquidators bots uh, let's say are starting to work, if there is not enough liquidity on the chain or on a DAX, they simply cannot work. So for us it was they were like the main factors why we chose Avalanche. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, yeah, Ben. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, the wallet experience is probably also different on different chains. So is that unified for yeah, users? It's not unified in one interface on one front end. Right. So when you when you connect your wallet, you basically choose the wallet that you want to connect, you select the network, and you create an account. Right. Yeah, it's, it may sound quite difficult, but um, yeah, you, you should take a look at the testnet. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, last question, you mentioned this debit card. Uh, can you tell us more about this debit card? A debit and credit card, it's, um, so it's been always one of our missions and goals uh, to not only connect the blockchains, but also to connect the uh, s traditional finance and decentralized finance. So we believe that the debit and credit card will be that point on co of connection for us. And I guess the credit card effectively allows you to borrow against the asset that you have, or what's yeah. the idea? So it's gonna be pretty much the same as Nexo. I don't know how Nexo works, but it uh, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, you can discuss it. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's good. Cool, yeah, thank you very much, Alice. Uh, thank you. <laughs>